know the riot act you know the rules at this point so let's get her done i'll start with the former intro or the formal intro over here we're recording and boom hey everyone anthony fantano here internet's busiest music nerd hope you are doing well and it's time for an exclusive interview and conversation with the one the only mr jpeg mafia he has a new ep out ep2 yeah. that we have talked about on the channel i'm yeah. listening to it i'm enjoying it. a lot of you guys in chat are as well and uh, we're going to talk with him about that new project and more to start how are you doing dude You I'm good, okay, good. I'm having a I'm having a strange 2021. Hmm. You know, it's pretty hostile energy, but that's where I live. It's what I live for. It's what I'm. Your so, your twenty yeah, your 2021 is strange, even after 2020. Yeah, 2020 was 2020 was okay, and then it got weird at the end, and then now 2021 has just been like all downhill. <laughs> As soon as the white people hit the capital, my life just turned to shit, man. It hasn't been right since. So I need some balance. Well, uh, has, you know, the release of this new EP brought any balance or just more chaos? Um, it'll probably bring some chaos. I don't give a fuck. But like, I, it hasn't brought any yet. And yeah, it has brought me some balance releasing it because I had it for so mm -hmm. long. I made that shit a long ass time ago, to be honest. So I, I usually don't really sit on music. Actually, I do. I sit on music hella long. I'm lying. But like, you know, I don't usually sit on a finished product that long. If I have something finished, it usually comes out like that. So like I had to really sit on that for a while. So I've moved on to like other things. I say that all the time. And I sound like a fucking record playing or whatever, skipping. I'm high. I'm sorry. But I just need to keep reiterating that so niggas understand like this is not how i sound from now on it's just how i sound right now or at that yeah. point no it's yeah. it's it's funny to hear you say that because looking at it from the outside i think a lot of people who have been following what you do for a while would would almost like see that ep in the context of like what you're doing on corn balls some of the more melodic directions that you were taking you know your tracks and on that project and sort of expanding that on on this ep in a way um nah hell no nah. not at all actually i didn't you know it was completely i was in a completely different headspace for all my heroes i was actually in a good headspace to make all my heroes i wanted to like slap the shit out of so many people when i made that ep it was a whole different vibration so usually i'm able to channel that in different ways in better ways but i just had to let it out in a very direct way you know what i mean so like yeah, and on whereas on core balls, like the melodies that came from that were more like, I don't know, they were more like exploratory and happier, even if they came from sad places, you know. But these ones were just like, I was just trying, I was just writing to be well, honest. I, well, I I don't agree that sort of. Uh, I, I'm I'm what I'm trying to say is I don't disagree that uh, underlying a lot of the softer and smoother sounds that you have on the CP, there is like some real negativity manifesting there <laughs> um what, no, was, sure. was it almost conscious uh to make the delivery method aesthetically the way that it is to sort of soften the blow a little bit of what you were saying hmm. no that's just how i am when i'm serious i'm just droll mm -hmm. you know what i mean like when i'm angry i can channel it into like anger on record and like when i'm live you see that kind of anger mm -hmm. too but i'm like actually upset i'm not going to yell at you at all there's going to be no yelling. We're, we're not yelling at anything. So I'm just going to I'm just going to calmly tell you you're fucking wrong. This is why this is why this is why. And I'm going to move on with my day. That's really that's really all it was. I had to put it somewhere. OK, so. well, I mean, to, to get a little specific, um, you know, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull up a few floorboards here, I think. And I'm going to ask you, like specifically on a track such as, you know, this one's for us. Um, you know, to talk right. about uh, sort of the roots of your anger or unhappiness on this EP coming away from this track, I think one could get the impression that at least, you know, from your perspective, there are people in the music industry operating against your success. Like, would, would, would you say that's a fair assessment from your point of view? I would say, yeah, I would say yes, but I didn't really touch on that on mm -hmm. this. What I touched on, on on this one's for us was more, um, 
it was about me, but I, I wanted to frame it as a bigger issue because it's an issue I just see a lot. And it's just like, these motherfuckers have a lot of power and no accountability for any fucking thing. So I had to remind them that these are the kind of people you let be in your industry for years and didn't say shit till it got too big and you couldn't ignore it no more. So this is what y'all do. So next time you call someone else out or you try to be some kind of moral code for any artist or any anything, just remember that's what you do. So like, that's what I wanted to be on that. A fucking reminder. Cause like these niggas forget and I don't forget shit. So like, yeah, it was like less about people being against my success and more about people just not being true to what they say they are, but pretending to be. And it's just like, that's too sly. And it's just like, y'all know what you're doing, but I'm not, I'm not here for it. So like, that's really what it is. Cause nobody else is going to say anything. Cause they think it's corny to even talk to niggas like that. But it's like, fuck all that. <laughs> fuck all that shit. If I got to be the first nigga to say it, I'll be the, f- I've been the first nigga to say a lot of things. So that's cool. I'll be the, I'll be well, that to again. the degree that there are people specifically in the industry that you're addressing on that track, um, who are operating in a way that is against your success. Like what would you say personally is the root of that? Like what, what is even sort of like driving the desire to make sure that like JPEG mafia doesn't make it or JPEG mafia doesn't gain so many fans or doesn't make this connection or something. I don't even, I don't even think it's all like that. It's just, a, it's, it's just like some people have a general disrespect in me. And when I point it out, they want to act like, I don't know. They want to act like something's changed or like, Oh, it's not the way it is. And I'm just a very direct person. And that's really what it is. I'm a very direct person dealing with very shallow, passive aggressive people. And that's just not how I operate. If I have an issue with you, I'm gonna say it first of all, and I'm gonna come to you. And it's just like, these people don't operate like that. They do a lot of shady shit and they wanna talk behind your back and do all this and that. So sometimes I gotta go on Twitter, and just tweet at them. Cause it's just like, I gotta operate how y'all niggas operate. Here you go. I know you'll see it now. Cause you, you know, they would like to pretend I don't matter in private. So it's just like, yeah. I just, you know, things look a certain way. I, it looks it looks chaotic, but I got shit under control. <laughs> All right. Let, let, I got it under control. Let, let me ask you about. Let, <laughs> let, Can I do drugs on the stream? Do what the F you want. Um, uh, just Yeah, there, there you go. That's good. That's good. Do that uh, while, while I queue up the next question here. Um, so I want to ask you a little bit about your creative process, which um, when we first had a discussion, I feel like that was probably in a certain way then it may have evolved into something different now, um, you know, especially now seeing the way that you've kind of changed and evolved from project to project that you've put out because of how much of the creative process is just so in here. Are you ever finding yourself in a place where you have to sort of reach outside of yourself for inspiration or direction or perspective on, on what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. all the time. I listen, that's what listening to other stuff and creating what other musicians is like when I make some shit with like vegan or James Blake or somebody like that. It's like, these are guys who also are like insular with like how they work and they like work from inside here and they just have all these sounds and things that they do that no one else can do. And that's just like, we all bring something to the table. It's like the Avengers. You know what I mean? We all got our superpower in our little city and uh, we all just do like, we all just bring something different to the table. And that's, that's why like, I'm, I'm always reaching out side of myself for inspiration to answer your question. But like, um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it all gets regurgitated through me. So it's going to come out. However, um, well, you know, speaking of James Blake, you obviously have uh, uh, crossed over with him. And, um, you know, I, I enjoy his stuff quite a bit, too. Uh, you know, before I get into the question, I'm going to ask James Blake, a scale of one to ten is a nice boy. Would you say ten? Would you say a five? Would you say a one? He was a nine before, but now that he's a blonde boy, he's a real I, nice I boy. Agree. So I that's agree. a that's a big, a big ten, ten right there. Um, it's a big ten. So when working with someone like James Blake, who, as you say, is, you know, very much up here kind of guy, um, being sort of of that stripe yourself, like what, what does almost like the creative process of two people who are not necessarily extroverted in that, in that way go, you know, is it a, a, a sort of a, 
uh, is, is there sort of like a, a time or a point of kind of figuring out each other's kind of like, you know, creative direction or abilities to get things to meld or fuse or function? Yeah, it's kind of like, um, I don't really know how to explain it. It's kind of like figuring out how to exist around somebody and, you know, how to be private around, but in like, how to be private, but in public or something. It's like it's figuring out how to take whatever you are in private and make it work in the context of like extroversion or like next to somebody else or with somebody else looking, you know what I mean? So obviously it's not going to be the same as when you're alone. But like if you get that symmetry with somebody, you can like just work pretty much like 90 percent to like how you really can work, you know, because uh, I say like when you're alone is when you come up with the, uh, the most I don't know. Interesting things, I guess. But that's just my opinion. But like, yeah, when you when you find somebody who you can work good with, it's like finding a good dance partner or, or some fucking weird analogy like that. What you said there also reminded me of the fact that I believe that you stated publicly that the the new EP and, and not that you're someone who overuses samples anyway, but you went completely sample free on this new project. Is that true? Yeah, but like I bet it's it's. I didn't say it to like brag or something or like to even make a big deal. I was just stating what yeah, I Yeah, did. yeah, no. I, again, I, I, I make shit without saying I, I, I know. As, I as, just, as someone who listens to your <laughs> yeah. stuff, I, I know that you don't overdo it on the sample front. Um, any, any way to yeah, begin yeah, with. Yeah, but, um, you know, was, was there something uh, freeing or almost tempting to kind of limit yourself in that way to sort of generate a certain kind of sound or vibe or, or something when embarking on this one? Or, or did it kind of just turn out that way when you were done? No, actually, I wanted to see what I could make mm. quickly, like that fast and like start to finish. And like, I just took all that energy and put it into that. And then actually, you know, what's funny. It's actually longer. Like there's a the original version of it, like the the director's cut, I call it, has like like this one's for us, like six minutes longer. And then there's other shit. But I cut all that shit in the interest of just making it more accessible. Mm. So like that's what really changed the way I edited it because like they're all like all the songs are actually way fucking longer. Like Last Dance is like eight minutes long or some shit. Fix Yourself is 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 yeah. Fix Yourself is like yeah. All of them are like ten minutes long, low key. So one day I'm actually put that full one out. But this is like I edited it to the sweetest parts and just put that out to, as like just to see. I just wanted to see what because that's what like. I don't know. That's what pop artists do and shit like that. They take the best parts and they whittle it down to make it like a smooth ride. It's it's like slick. It's very slick. It, it's presented to be simple, but it's like very delicate how they do it. So I wanted to try to mimic that. And, you know, whatever. That's actually that's, that's actually something I've written down a question about, because it, since we last talked, you know, it's been a few years and, you know, the. Yeah, I guess you'd call it the JPEG Mafia fandom has grown by leaps and bounds since then. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> outside of what you were just saying, are there other ways that you would note that maybe your creative process has changed now that you sort of are familiar with and, and just sort of have more of a grapple of this larger growing audience that you're actually making music for. And you're sort of maybe coming away from these projects, consciously thinking about how will this be consumed? How will this be perceived? What will the reaction to this be? Should I change it or edit it to elicit a certain other type of reaction? Shit, man. That's a long winded ass. Sorry. Question. Uh, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Um, let me just let me think about everything yeah. you just said and try to answer it. Uh, it's accurate. So you said, "I how has it changed? How much has it changed from when it was what when it was before?" Yeah, basically? I mean, now that you are, I guess more. Oh, not, yeah. Now that I'm more, I have like more of like a fan base, yeah. and like a and a, a, a sound consensus, exactly, sound and, and, and just sort of like yeah. awareness of what. I don't know, they like and they don't like, which you've played with before on social media, you know, sort of like you know, uh, uh, asserting this meme of like being disappointed and everything with like stuff that you're doing. Yeah, but but obviously, yeah. like, you know, creatively, you're, you're thinking about that in some way. And like, in what ways does that enter your head and impact sort of like what you do and sort of how you produce certain things or how you present certain projects? I guess, it, I guess now I understand. So like, I guess it can, um, it can alter how you do things if you let it. 
you know, if you get caught up in what people say or like what people expect, I guess. But at the end of the day, it's like you just have to stand stand your ground on shit. Like I literally watch and this is not to say this about this EP, but I literally watch. I've been here the whole time. People forget this shit. But like before Veteran came out, I was just here. <laughs> there was a whole like long ass time before that when nobody gave a fuck about nothing I was doing. And I didn't forget about those years. So like um, I just it's just interesting watching people react to something in real time and then watching that opinion change over time. So like you have to just stand your ground or whatever it is. It's a risk you take as an artist. If people like it, that's fantastic. If they don't like it, you just have to go back to the drawing board. So like, that's just really it. I, I live and die by that kind of thing. So like, um, yeah, I don't know, project to project. It's just risk taking. So I'm taking risk. Like I'm taking fucking risk. I'm about to do some, I just have to take risk. It's just how I live in uncomfortability. So I just have to like live in that and try to succeed in that. I can't do what everyone else is doing. And I don't know if that answers your question, but the gist of it is it affects you if you let it, but it doesn't really affect me because like, yeah, I've been here for so long that I've actually been unknown longer than I've been known. So it's just like, it's going to take like another like fucking 10 years for me to really be like, okay, now it's starting to fuck with me. But like, nah, I've been, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been here for way too long. And, so. You know, it's it's interesting to hear you say some of that because, you know, the, the, this attitude that, hey, you know, if it doesn't work back to the drawing board, because ultimately you want it to work for the audience that you're giving it to. But simultaneously, like the way that you carry yourself and the way that you talk about you know, popularity and online perceptions of you, uh, you don't strike me as someone who buys into celebrity in any way, shape or form. And, you know, the way that you interact with the JPEG mafia fan base, it's not so much like, you know, Hey, we're we're all like, let's, let's all hug the blah, 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 blah. You know, it's obviously you appreciate, you know, that your fans love your music, but simultaneously, it seems like there's an energy where you have to keep people at bay at like a certain distance. You know, it's like, you can only come so close. I mean, is it, am I, am I wrong in that read? I mean, here's the thing. I, I have to appreciate even those people who want to get too close because like, I just remember a time when did nobody, there was nobody at all. There was like five people and like, so to have anybody who has that kind of visceral reaction to something I'm doing, you know what I mean? I have to show some kind of appreciation. Do I have to keep an arm's length and protect myself? Absolutely. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, some, <laughs> some of these niggas are weird as shit. I mean, some of these people are weird as shit, you know what I mean? But I just appreciate that because I'm weird as shit, you know? So it's just like, I know where the energy's coming from, but like, yeah. So like, yeah, I just, I just gotta like appreciate it. But at the same time, keep it arms distance from yeah them. but still like leave space to like if you want to just spit in someone's mouth yeah man i can't wait to be able to do that again i guess that's never gonna happen again <laughs> you, you know it, 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 <laughs> that's never it may not again. but going into a fantasy world like first show back at a venue packed house what what's what's the first song you're gonna play oh fuck man oh i don't know Damn. <laughs> uh, I might I might hit him I might hit him with fall just for old time's <laughs> sake. I might just take it back to 2020 and be like, all right, let's go back to this part and just take it all the way back up. I'm gonna have to alter my set a lot. Shit, man. I got too much shit. I'm gonna have to disappear, y'all. I can't I can't keep releasing shit. <laughs> but no, yo, I don't really buy into celebrity. You're right. I'm just at my core, I'm just a simple person. I don't really need much to get by. So like i just don't operate in the same headspace as like a celebrity would or somebody who's just like flashy as fuck not that there's anything wrong with that but like that's just not who i am i'm a simple person and like i just like i just love making music so like that's just really it i'm gonna always be doing that no matter what so i don't really again i've been here the whole time when i had one fan now i have all these fans it doesn't it's like i'm here it doesn't matter i'm always gonna be here. um if, if I'm recalling this correctly, the new EP, you have it out uh, with like Republic Records. Is that to... 
yeah, yeah like how, how exactly did the, that connection come about because obviously up until this point you you know you've done what you've been doing independently uh pretty much and you know what what exactly is this uh a decision doing in terms of like you know adding to your process your releases just whatever you know just let just let us know it's just so oh, yeah, i mean of, of course no um <laughs> i mean it's just it's just a decision that had to be made, really, you know. And at the end of the day, I'm really, I actually really like Republic. I don't have anything bad to say about them. They're actually really good. At I, what I, they do. I didn't, I didn't really and assume like, that you would because, I mean, you've been doing what you've been doing for so long that I imagine that for anybody else to sort of like step in and into the process of that, they'd have to be offering something that would improve the situation. Now listen, I'm a <laughs> businessman. <laughs> So, you know, I always there, there's mine, there's nothing there's like, nothing wrong with that. There's what? too many people I think in the industry who are not business minded enough being taken complete advantage of as a result of that. Oh, you can be business minded and be taken oh, advantage sure. of, trust me. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I like them. They're not they don't they do they really change my idea of what a label that a label could actually do some good mm-hmm. low key. So like I just I just appreciate them on that front. So I don't really I don't have nothing bad to say about them. They're, they're great, but like yeah, it it was something that like I I wanted to do, I had to do. So you know, it is what it is, and here I am. So goes another artist with label woes. Fuck it, <laughs> but it's fine. It's really it's really not that big of a deal. But um, yeah, I don't got nothing bad to say about them. But for me, yeah, I do everything by myself. Um, and as long as you don't interrupt my creative process and try to like, you know, I, I was almost signed to some labels and like, before I even put pen to paper, these niggas was, these people, excuse me, these people were telling me, they were like, oh, so we see that you mixed and mastered your record. That's great. But how about you don't and let us do it? And it's just like, no, that's not what's going on here. You know what I mean? Like. You you can't change shit while we're eating sushi. I haven't signed anything yet. Like, so these people are entitled as hell, man. So like, um, I don't know. I just, I don't operate like that. I don't operate with people trying to put their hands in the cookie jar with my shit. It's just like, let me do my shit. Leave me the fuck alone. You'll get a finished product at the end of the day. Don't bother me. I'll figure it out. Um, you know, talking about the uh, uh, proximity that, uh, you know, your fans have, with you again and sort of like the intimacy that they have with, uh, you know, you and your work. Oh, excuse me over here. I'm fucking fucking up my light situation. There we go. Um, you, you know, one thing that I've been noticing and enjoying is, uh, outside of the music videos is the other output that you've been, you know, dropping on your YouTube channel, like this vlog and interview series that you've been doing. And, um, you know, when you started doing this, like what was the idea essentially, was this just to be supplemental to all the music that you're making or bring people into the process of not just your music, but the people, you know, who you're linking up with and, you know, you're making music with them or, um, just to get people more of an insight into your, I guess, philosophy and, and thoughts like the, you know, the mentality that goes into the music itself. Like, you know, what, 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 what did you think, you know, you'd be letting people in on by doing this essentially? I guess this is my version of getting like more personal and more intimate with the fans. Like you said, like every artist, every artist I've liked, let me say it like this. Like, when I like an artist, it can be for any number of reasons. It could be for their personality, for authenticity, for their skill. But, like, I'm starting to, I, I guess I started to realize that everyone doesn't think like this. They don't, like, separate these things in the way I do. It's all, it's all smushed together and, like, there's different sides of the pie that have different percentages for them. So it's just, like, it's, it doesn't get separated like that. So people if you want people to like understand you more, you have to let them in a little bit more. So just, that was my version of it because um, I just didn't have anything like that that existed, but I, I refuse to let anyone who I didn't approve of, like film me uh, in any manner like that. So like, cause I just wanted to put my real life. So like, it's just out of context shit. And I make so much stuff that sometimes I put like throwaway beats in there or I put freestyles that I can't release. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, I talk to other artists because 
I wanted to give other artists, the initial point of it was I wanted to give other artists at least one spot space where they didn't have to watch what they said or like keep in, like be private because these motherfuckers that are interviewing you are interviewing you are weirdos. Just just one spot where I would just like let you speak. I'm not gonna interrupt you. You can say whatever the fuck you want. If you want me to keep it in, I'll keep it in. If you want me to take it out, I'll take it out. But like I wanted to give like somewhere where it was more artist control. Mm. Damn. That shit went out and everything got hella loud. I'm being hella loud. But um yeah. That that was basically it. That's HG Bar in, in a nutshell. So like, you know, I want to continue that, but like in order to continue that, you gotta be friendly with people and shit. So like I'm such a bitter ass person that like I'm trying to keep people at a distance right now. But I hope all my friends out there know that I still love them and I'm still here. I just hate so many other people right now that like I just have to dig myself out of that this headspace, but it'll get done. You know, everything will be fine. I I you know, I I I find uh your perception and because i identify with it a lot of the time you know your your simultaneous love and hate for everything i i am just inspired <laughs> by uh quite a bit um and and what you were saying there a second ago about just the platform that you're giving other artists and uh, you know obviously you're not like trying to you know make a run on uh anybody in the journalism industry per se but like you know in in a perfect world I mean, it, it seems like almost like you could have, you know, any number of artists using their pre-established YouTube channels and, you know, social media pages and so on and so forth, which collectively probably have a lot more views and hits and exposure to any number of people than Rolling Stone, you know, just just do just interview each other. Just <laughs> just talk with each that other. That was kind of that was kind of that was literally my point when I was doing, it. I was like, why the fuck do I have to put this on someone else's channel? I can just, we can just talk to each other and we can upload it on each other's channel and monetize that shit. The fuck, you know yeah. what I mean? And then like, I don't have to have all this wacky, weird editing and like sound effects put in my shit to make it. I'm just not like that, man. I'm not with the dick jokes and all that goofy shit that people like. I'm a grown ass man. I like my music, music. And like, you know what I'm saying? I like some jokes here and there, but like, I'm not a fucking comedian. Like, I'm here to make music and like, let's get it on. Like, so that's, that's really like, I hope HD Bar like show people that like, I'm serious about what I do in the same way, like the Carter documentary showed like Lil Wayne was serious about what he did. Like, I wanted this to show that, to showcase that. So I'm going to continue it and I have a lot stored up. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I just needed to take a break because like, most hateful shit. Man. I'm glad that my original decision to keep this interview dick joke free was a good one. I didn't know that you were that was going to be your reaction to that, or you know that was going to be your opinion <laughs> off the bat. But I'm really glad that I kept this interview. You know, I had I had a whole sheet here that was just like half dick jokes, and I was like, you know what, maybe this isn't maybe this isn't the way. Um, I did I did want to ask you though. I did want to ask you though. I mean, maybe you could have have an outside opinion here, but like of the four that I'm about to tell you, like. Best oh fighting game franchise. Is it Street Fighter? Is it Mortal Kombat? Super Smash Brothers or Tekken? Same again. Tekken, Tekken Super Smash Brothers, Mortal Kombat, or Street Fighter. What's the best fighting game franchise? I'm gonna have to go with um I'm gonna say one thing. I'm mad that you didn't put my well, I, that, that's that's what game, I thought. Just King King. I thought Fighters. you were I thought you were gonna have some wild fucking game. out there like preference that and I, I, I knew that you were. I was like <laughs> yeah, I, I like wrote all these shit. down. I'm like, there's no but, way any of these would be his favorite. Because he, he's good. But out of those out of those two, out of those two, I'll say out of those four, I'll say Street Fighter, just as a lifelong fan of Street Fighter. But I enjoy playing Smash Brothers way more, to be honest. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you but yeah um i'm gonna hit you with uh, uh some viewer questions because we, we've gotten quite a few of, oh, of those again if you guys want to uh uh scroll down there's a tab that says q a you can submit some questions and uh, our mods will i can't help but our smile. mods will get them to me Th these these are very sane questions don't worry about it don't worry about it um oh, I, I... so uh, uh uh joey pd wants to ask you know, I don't know if there's something that you have a big philosophical sort of like take or answer on, uh, but he wants to know if you think that you've taken rap out of the Drake era. Have you taken rap out of the Drake era? Is, <laughs> is rap finally out of the Drake era? Thanks to you. Um, no, <clears throat> no. And it won't be thanks to me, to be honest. 
I'm, I'll probably maybe I'll be the catalyst to that shit. But like me, myself, no, nah, man, I'm not I don't think I'm someone who gets reacted to correctly in real time. I don't think anyone's going to like gravitate to me in that way. I don't have the personality for that. Like, I'm not a nice person. Yeah, so, I, mean, I, I, I wonder so. where that, you know, sort of like. But I took it somewhere. Fuck no, it. I, I agree. It's somewhere. <laughs> I, I wonder where sort of that perspective comes from, because like I, I feel I feel like we're still currently in a very Drake dominant era. Like even even with the lack of Drake, I feel like yeah. I feel like it's still pretty Drake dominant. Pretty much, everyone still sounds like him. It's like it's still very much the Drake era. So, nope, that shit ain't come true yet. Um, I, I've gotten a lot of questions about this, which I think maybe you were anticipating uh, to a degree. But there are a lot of people asking, like, what exactly went down with the Panic Room video? Are we going to see the original, so on and so forth? Like, oh, you know, what, what, what was the whole debacle to do with that? I just, I can't even, I can't even, <laughs> I just can't, can't even. even, I can't even, I can't even skirt around that shit or pretend to be cryptic. It's just like, it just can't be posted in a place where it can't be posted yeah. in public. So like, I just finally made a video I thought really, really, really sizzled my bacon and you know, it just, you can't, I, I just, I couldn't, I can't put it out. So like, listen, it'll come out. I just, time has to go by <laughs> and then I'll put is it out, but it can't is, come out. Is it something right I could drop on OnlyFans or something? Or, you know, it's, there's, there's, there's a lot of artists on there right now. That's all I'm saying. Maybe, maybe it could go on OnlyFans, but like, I don't know, man, this, 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 this can't go anywhere okay. right now. I just have to like. <laughs> I, I actually wasn't expecting you to ask. I'm sorry. That. I've just gotten a lot of questions about it. There are a lot of people asking about the Panic Room video. Um, and, and I saw a lot of people reacting to, you know, the I'm whole thing video, online man. anyway. So, um, you know, let, let me ask uh, this, uh, something that was kind of bumping around in my head that uh, has become a point of interest, uh, you know, watching you sort of grow and evolve as an artist and, you know, sort of as this uh, public persona. You know, you strike me as someone who I, I think uh, in, in almost in an, like in an archetypal way, there are a lot of elements of, I guess what you could say, like masculinity that, you know, you embrace. Um, but simultaneously, it seems like the further things move around or move along, uh, there are elements of that also that, you know, you sort of like reject as well in like a very open, you know, in, in very clear way. Um, in a way that, you know, almost seems like you clearly want to send the audience, you know, sort of like a message as to sort of like the pros and the cons of that. Um, you know, is, is, are, are there yeah. ways publicly and, you know, in, in your music as well that you sort of want people to be kind of perceiving gender through what you do and, you know, what it means to be masculine or, you know, I, identify or sort of like think about sex and gender in any way? Yeah. To an extent, yes. I kind of just want to. I guess I was just brought up in a way where, not that that didn't matter, but I guess like I just didn't perceive them in the way other people did. So I never caught on to the social cues that like other people really did. So they don't come out in me and it just comes out neutral because that's just the way I've always been. So like <clears throat> I do reject a lot of like, I. I embrace a lot of parts of masculinity. A lot of times I embrace it for irony or to like portray something in a song. Like when I when I do something in a song, I take the like, I don't know, I take the it's like I take form of, of whatever I'm talking about. And but like um, the parts that I reject causes a lot of issues because like, you know, a lot of people say they're about that. They say they don't fuck with racist and these kind of people and et cetera, et cetera. But it's just like, it's not until you had to deal with these people in private when nobody was around that you understand why I don't fucking like these people. And it's just like, I absolutely reject that kind of shit. And I just, I don't like the idea that anybody should be in a box and especially not black people. I don't think that they should be in any kind of box and like, damn, man, don't be black and try to do any damn thing that ain't the fucking norm, yo. They will slap your ass back into the box or call you a fucking weirdo. Trust me, yo. I was here pre-Twitter and there was no help. Nobody cared. There was nowhere to go. <laughs> we just had to take the brunt of that shit and keep it pushing. So, like, 
I don't know. I just learned that being yourself is like this kind of weapon. So like, yeah, I use that in song and like it comes out that way because that's just how I am. I'm not trying specifically to do anything. I'm just speaking about myself and sometimes weaving it in and out of reality and, and perception. So like, yeah, it comes out it comes out that way because that's just how I am. But I'm not I guess I'm not trying to put an, anything out there on mm. purpose. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with your observation that uh, in, in something I find odd about that observation is like and, and I don't know if you have an opinion on this, but like to a degree that I think a lot of people, especially white people don't understand is like there is a really like strong grip of traditionalism that like, you know, runs through the black community, which obviously like, you know, that reminder, that push to sort of push someone like you back into a normal state, you know, sort of comes from, but it's really odd that like a lot of white people feel comfortable participating in that <laughs> as well, like to like police the behavior of people of color who they perceive as like acting weird or flamboyant or sort of like outside of the box, sort of, as you say. Yeah, I mean, I don't even fucking know, man. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that shit. But yeah, people just think they can just, I don't know. Just when it comes to things that have to do with black people, people think they can just participate and just come in and fuck shit up and just leave and just not deal with any consequences. You know, it's like, it's just how things go. I don't really know. You know, you can call it out. You can do whatever, but like, it's here and it's getting stronger with the internet. I see it so much. So well, now, yeah. now that I'm sort of like, I don't know, digesting what you're saying a little bit. Um, it's also got me thinking like for, for a lot of people who are sort of outside of the black community, especially white people, a lot of those perceptions and expectations most likely come from hip hop music. And, you know, and, and, and with hip hop being sort of like a window to black culture for a lot of white people who honestly like have no other exposure to black, black culture otherwise, um, you know, is, is, is that ever something that's sort of like on your mind ever that for like a lot of young kids who are listening to your music, like, you know, you're, you're one of the few, you know, uh, uh, bits of exposure to black thought or a black mind that, you know, they, they have through your music, through your art. Yeah, I'm super aware of that, actually. And I think anybody, I think everybody's aware of it. It's just like, you know, it's very, I don't know how to describe it. It's very like, it's a very odd thing to know that your music can be digested by people it's not really aimed at. But like, at the same time, it's just how things always have been low key. I can't really remember a time where it was any different since music's been recorded. It's kind of just been that way. So I, you know, I don't really know. It's just how it is. And it's just like, I guess it's just like a question that like, I don't even know, man. It's just, it just kind of, it's kind of one of those, it is what it is things. It's like, you can let it bother you. Like I've seen it, like some people like go crazy on Twitter about it, but it's just like, it's just kind of is what it is. It's like, you know what I mean? White people have money. They're going to be the ones digesting this shit. It is what it is. It doesn't really matter who you are. So um, it's like, it doesn't really matter who you are. So it doesn't matter who you, what you say. Like what you say is going to be di digested by people. It's not going to be aimed at uh, a lot of times, but you know, respect to the people that still aim it like public enemy and, and like ice cube and people like that is what it is. Um, let me also ask you, because I got a lot of uh, questions about this prior to the, the interview. Um, there are a so, lot of fans who I guess are interested to know sort of the ways in which, uh, I guess politics and your political philosophy intersects with your music. I think we saw a lot of that coming out, especially on social media. I mean, not just from you, from a lot of people, um, you know, over the course of the last election. And I mean, you know, reading into you and what you do and what you say, like, obviously, you know, you hold, at least when you're thinking about the mainstream, like beliefs that are pretty radical. I mean, beliefs that for the most part, you know, I, I don't personally see as radical, but you know, your average, I don't know, MSNBC host would probably gasp at. Um, yeah, they would, yeah. they would never. <laughs> but, but still having said that, like you are pretty 
like strong as far as like being in the corner of like, hey, like radical politics and philosophy is sort of one thing, but you still have to kind of go out and vote for the lesser of two evils at the end of the day, um, you know, which which was my opinion as well. But uh, it sort of seems like there are a lot of people who still don't kind of get the idea of like, you know, just because you enter the voting booth doesn't mean sort of like your beliefs in A, B, C or D have just sort of like been thrown out the window. And, you know, I, I guess like what are your views on things like, you know, voting as a means of like harm reduction and, and that sort of stuff? Um, well, voting as a means of harm reduction. What I you mean, mean, you know, we could be in the timeline that we are right now, or we could be in the timeline where all the people stormed the Capitol got another four years to run the country, you know, essentially. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. Um, I mean, look, it's like some people don't want to believe that shit. That's really what some of it is like. So sometimes reality is too much of people to like deal What's with some and it it's not so sometimes it's not so much that like i don't know how to explain it like i have my beliefs and yeah a lot of them are radical because i see that like peace never gets anything done i don't know what the fuck has any ever been i don't know man if, if, if someone knows some history correct me but like i've never seen no shit get moved forward by fucking peace it's always by violence and strong arm and shit so i just developed these beliefs not because like i read some shit on youtube or like i read too many books or some shit like that it's a survivalist mindset it's born of reality so like that's where my beliefs really lie it's not so much i align with anything i just like believe I just had to develop these beliefs out of like survivalism. Like I dealt with racism firsthand, not just like, I didn't just like catch a YouTube comment that called me a nigger. Like that shit was in real life. So like, I just have a different perspective on it. So that's where I'm coming at it uh, from. But yeah, some people don't want to believe in reality sometimes. It's like, it's better to live in like a fake fantasy world. That's for the people that storm the Capitol. They just, they, reject reality so fucking much that they want to force reality to be their perception and that's just not what that's not what happens you know what i mean so like um yeah i don't know if that answered your question but i'm high and i just hope that answered your question because i just don't feel like i made any no, sense you're fine. There. um i got a few other <laughs> questions uh uh people asking over here uh, saying if there are any um and, and I know you were talking earlier about uh, uh, keeping people at a distance right now and, and feeling like you're uh, a big ball of hate. I get it. Uh, but simultaneously, are there any uh, collaborations that you sort of have like in the works right now or that you're kind of hoping to pursue into the near future that uh, you might want to tease toward or kind of tell people about? Yeah, I got some stuff. I did some stuff with Clamps Casino mm -hmm. that I want to get released. Um, who else I got coming up, man? Um, there's some stuff, there's some stuff with, you know, the usual people. I got some stuff from everywhere. I can't, I can't really say who it is, to be honest. I just have to kind of just like keep it hushed, but like, yeah, I got some stuff in the works. I'm always working. I don't really stop working, man. That's why, you know, I, I'm, I'm a crackhead. I can never be a celebrity. I'm an actual crackhead. You feel me? Well, I mean, like, this, this past year, I think... <laughs> They let a crackhead in the music industry. Th this this past year, I think you achieved one of the highest achievements I think a crackhead ever could, and that was uh, uh, your your appearance on a Gorillaz record, um, which which oh, right. I, I don't think anybody saw coming. I mean, not only did nobody see that coming, but to do a track with Gorillaz and then have Chai on the track, and then on top of it have yeah, what is arguably one of your most feel good features ever. Like it was it was lit it was literally a <laughs> yeah. smile inducing feature. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. You know, could, could you tell us a little bit about that process and like what exactly caused you to go in that direction and sort of like the challenges and surprises that came as a result of, you know, crossing over with gorillas? Um, yeah, actually. So yeah, that was interesting because they gave me that beat. It was very oh. bare. It didn't have all that stuff it has now. And I was just writing to it and I didn't really know what to do because it was so happy. And I'm just like, man, you know, I'm actually, you know, I'm a pretty, I'm a really negative person for the most part. I'm not like outwardly like, fuck you. But like when I'm sitting down to write, some negative shit's probably going to come out. 
So I was just sitting there. I was like, man, this beat makes me very like happy. So like, I don't know. I just kind of wrote in that kind of a uh, way. It, I just took it as a challenge, really, because like. I'm not, I don't consider myself some kind of super rapper or something, but I was just like, you know what? I'm about to try to like exist on this regardless of what people think I might do. I know people wanted me to like yell and shit. I actually did yell on there at one point, but it was cut and I'm glad they cut it. Cause I, I didn't, I was like, I didn't like how I yelled on it, but like, yeah, it was an interesting process. And then I got, that was the second verse. I recorded the second verse separate. And the first verse I recorded at David Alburn's studio and we were really drunk yeah i, I don't know if it was yeah. i don't know if it was the, <laughs> we're really, really i don't know drunk. if it was the same uh same thing uh slow tie was kind of going into describing that as as well he was talking about uh, in, in his interview he was saying there were instruments everywhere and masks and it was a really odd place to be yeah it was like some cult shit it's just it was like I, I walked into this build i was in london and i was just walking around first of all i don't i, I don't understand how the streets are numbered and all that shit and like the postal codes so i don't know i don't know where i'm at yeah over, over like, there they're like I six eight three three b zero like i'm i'm lost lost like i don't actually know where the fuck i'm at not like i'm lost in la like no i'm lost i don't know where i'm at so like i'm looking for the place and i finally found it and you went upstairs and it looks completely different from how it looks outside and like um yeah they there's just instruments everywhere and they were working on the track that got released and again, it was just very bare. And he was like, all right, man, let's write. And I was like, I was not in the headspace to write. I wasn't in the, I was really intoxicated. But like something about like, I was just like, man, I'm here. I'm in, I'm in the gorilla studio. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I used to listen to Clint Eastwood and shit when I was like 10. And now I'm in this guy, these people's studio. I'm right here. Like, I'm about to write some shit. So I just, <laughs> I just like, I wrote right there, like, like my life depended on it, really. Because I was just like, I can't waste this time. So that's what the first verse was. And then the second verse I wrote at home, I was more relaxed. So the first verse is some whole other shit. <laughs> so actually, when I was recording the video, the dude kept asking me, like, who's the second guy on the song? And I'm like, that's me, man. This is all just two different moods i guess but it's the same it's just two different times I, I don't think uh, i mean obviously there's a contrast there but i don't think anybody would have guessed that all of that came from two totally separate sessions of of writing but you 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 crunched yeah. it you were like I, it's either do or die right now and you did it yeah man it was like why, who if i waste this opportunity it's like who the fuck even am i you know so um <laughs> do it uh, uh, I, I want to throw at least one more at you before we send you off. I have to, you know, get ready for the next interview and everything. But, you know, before I do, I want to say, uh, yeah, you know, thank you for coming through and taking the time. And, um, you know, we're most definitely going to be problem. looking forward to, uh, um, you know, the next thing that you got coming out. Are you, are you looking forward to a busy 2021 or are you going to try to hang back for the most part? We'll see, but I'm going to, the shit I got working on, man, I just got to, release it later i just gotta take a break i'm burnt out i just like i've been releasing too much shit it's just too much content <laughs> i'm just i'm over it I'm, i really need to just relax so i'm gonna hang back and get really fat and come back um come back on stage just be like huge just like you know what i'm saying just be huge on stage that's my that's my goal i want to come back and take my shirt off and just discuss people <laughs> I mean, thick, nah, thick, playing. thick is but in yeah. though. Thick is in right now. It's just, it's just, it's just oh, more yeah, popular man. with women than men generally. But I, th I think that you could be that beacon. You could, you could be that spokesperson for, <laughs> for male thickness. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, that, sounds, that sounds like a viper. Album. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, b before you go, I have to say, like, I saw a video today uh from his youtube channel where it said some shit like i broke up daft punk so i could bring back bobby shmurda it said that it was some song and music video that said that that said hey, that you. and and what i found so funny about it is like i was at this music festival once in texas where i met this kid this dude who, who was a very passionate guy he was, he was a little off though but he was a very passionate guy and 
you know, he, he was just some kid who obviously was, was very into what I, I did and like, uh, you know, and very smart of him. He saw this as like a make or break type of moment. And he said, I need to say something that will get this guy's attention really quick because I could literally just be anybody saying, oh, Anthony, I really like your music. And, um, he's, you know, was t- saying hi and introducing himself. And he said, um, I used to intern for Viper. And I was like, you, you used to inter, you used to like work with Damn. Viper. And then he was like going into like the Damn. process of all of that and like not really getting paid or anything. <laughs> and like all that being like really weird. And and when I saw that video, like it reminded me of, of that because I'm just like, what white teenager does this man have working for him right now? Who's <laughs> like, it would be really good if you did a song or a video with Daft Punk about it. Cause it would get more attention on your shit. Like, I'm just like, what memer does this man have working on his YouTube channel that he's like urging him to do content about Daft Punk? And I, I, wanna, Shmurda? <laughs> I really want to believe he's just really that up on current events. Like he's just so up on current events, he's just like, all right, here we go. Well, you know, it's like, I, I, I think, <laughs> I, I think he it. is smart enough in that he knows the audience of people that are like consuming what he does. So he's like, let me yeah. just have a weird white kid do things for me, or just sort of figure things out for me, because that that that'll instantly plug into that weird white kid energy. And, you know, it's, I, I wouldn't yeah. even need, I wouldn't even need to put myself in the mindset of a weird white kid, which can be triggering for some people, you know what I mean? Can, can be really, <laughs> because, so, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've done it. Some it's people, some people enough. go down that road, good. they never come back. You know, it's, it's, it's a dark, it's a dark place. Yeah. I had to drink myself out of that shit. <laughs> shit was traumatizing. <laughs> yeah. I salute you for, for, for I salute you, man. <laughs> I salute you, man. Yeah, th- for real. thank you. Th- thank me for my service. Thank me for my service. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank but, you. For but before service, you go, man, thank for you sure. for your service. Everyone in the chat should should thank Peggy for his that. service as well. Um, thank y'all. Yeah, you know, I appreciate y'all, and I appreciate you for letting me. Yeah, do no. This. We, we again, we appreciate you for coming through and being an open book and being a great guest. Thank you very much, man. Man, I appreciate it, man. All right, have a good one.